Waste is one of the single biggest challenges to civilization. Two billion tons of waste are produced globally each year. 80% of this waste is dumped in open landfills polluting our rivers, our lakes and our oceans. And only 4% out of it will be recycled. The problem is even bigger as landfills generate 8% of our world total carbon emissions. As population grows and economic conditions improve, the problem grows exponentially. At UBQ, we developed a revolutionary solution to the waste epidemic. We have redefined waste disposal, eliminated waste-related pollution, and unlocked the immense value inside waste. So what is the UBQ solution? What we can tell you is the base of our patents. We take all your household garbage, the organic parts like food residues, garden trimmings and dirty carton, the unsorted packages and mixed plastics, and instead of dumping it to the landfill, we convert it into a new material. During the UBQ conversion process, the heterogeneous stream of materials is reduced to its more basic natural components that reconstitute and bind together into a new composite sustainable material, the UBQ material. All this through a clean, energy-efficient and commercially viable process. What is UBQ material, you ask? It's a new bio-based, climate-positive, worldwide patented material that can be used in existing industries for the manufacturing of thousands of products. It is clean, sustainable and cost-effective. And it is also recyclable, the greenest thermoplastic material on the planet. We provide the missing link between waste disposal through to new product manufacturing, transitioning from a linear extraction and consumption model that exhausts our natural resources to a truly circular economy. Brilliant minds are behind this breakthrough development, and we are proud of our team. UBQ Insight products are a real and available solution. Using it simply makes sense for us, for the planet, and our future generations. UBQ. Everything matters. We're now joined by UBQ's Vice President of Marketing, Liat Arad. Welcome, Liat. How are you doing? I'm good. Thank you so much, Ben. Thank you for having us. Of course, of course. And we're so excited to welcome UBQ back to APAC following your appearance at Policy Conference. And the UBQ is truly an amazing award-winning company and we'll get to learn how UBQ works in a few moments, but can you just tell us a bit more about the environmental challenges humanity is facing and how the idea for UBQ came around? Absolutely. Um, so basically we did speak to a bit of the environmental challenge and as you mentioned, um, waste is really one of the most monumental problems facing everyday society today. Uh, we often quote the kind of 2 billion tons of municipal solid waste that's created every year, but to really grasp the size of the problem, uh, I don't know if any of you have heard, but there's been plastic bags found uh, spotted at the bottom of the deepest ocean. There's waste floating in space even. Uh, so really we're a society that is unfortunately drowning in waste. Um, and what UBQ is able to do is we take all of the waste that was going to be uh, dumped in landfills. So that's everything mixed together. It's the chicken bones together with the uh, plastic containers, the cast off bottles, dirty diapers even. Uh, we take that heterogeneous mixture and are able to convert it with our patented technology into a, uh, into a material that's able to then substitute plastic and oil-based resins in the manufacturing of hundreds and thousands of applications um, across industries. So rather than utilizing you know, polypropylene or polyesterin or any other uh, materials that require natural resources, we're actually taking waste and creating a valuable resource out of it. Um, you, you asked how the company came about. Uh, UBQ was founded in 2012. Uh, by Yehuda Pearl and Tato Biggio. It was actually a, a bit of a happy mistake in a lab that Yehuda discovered. Um, and as soon as he understood what he was able to create from this cast off material, this waste that would have otherwise been decomposing in landfills, 
uh, and understood the impact that that could have, uh, he immediately invested into further research and development to see how it could be implemented into the industrial process. Um, Yehuda Pearl, uh, beyond just an entrepreneur, is also actually a rabbi. Um, and when he talks about UBQ, he, he really talks about it not just as a business, but as a calling and um, a mission to tikkun olam, to really change the world for and leave a better place for future generations. Well, considering that we have waste all the way down at the bottom of the ocean, which I didn't yeah. know about, to, to <laughs> space, uh, I'm so glad that that UBQ is, is taking this on. Um, we saw in the video that about 10% of carbon emissions come from our garbage. Can you walk us through how exactly UBQ tackles this challenge and what impact that has on the environment? Absolutely. So the first thing, I'll do a mini chemistry lesson. So the reason why our waste, beyond just being an eyesore and of course um, a danger to animals who ingest it. Beyond that, the reason why it's actually causing such a problem for climate change is when all of that waste together, and if you look in your kitchen um, trash can, I know that I have, you know, actually quite a few dirty diapers, unfortunately, uh, diapers and food left over, about 80% of our household waste is what we would call organic. I know organic sounds like a very um, kind of innocent word, but when in, when we're talking about waste, it, it is exactly those leftover chicken, uh, banana peels, dirty diapers, paper, cardboard, all of those things are what we call organic. And when that decomposes in conditions that are not suitable for compost, it decomposes into methane gas. And methane is roughly 86 times more potent than carbon dioxide. Um, so over a 20 year period. So all of that is uh, kind of really creating a lot of problems and in, um, in, in greenhouse gases. And what UBQ does for every ton of landfill waste that we divert and then turn into our UBQ material, we're essentially preventing 12 tons of CO2 equivalent from polluting the environment. So we're actually providing a solution for manufacturers in the plastics industry um, to create and manufacture products and do good for the earth and feel good about it without having to um, take a hit on profitability because UBQ material is a drop-in material that is um, what essentially one-to-one -one cost competitive with virgin plastic. Wow, well, I definitely needed that um, that chemistry lesson. I don't know about anybody else, but I, I sure do. Um, of course, we know that carbon emissions are not just an Israeli or an American crisis, but one that requires complete inter international cooperation. What are some of the ways and some of the partnerships you're establishing right now to combat a crisis of this global scale? It definitely requires all hands on deck. Um, that's the first thing I'll say. But uh, we have a very special relationship with the United States beyond having um, American investors in the company. Our first product launch in August 2019 was with the Central Virginia Waste Management Authority. Uh, in almost a poetic way, we launched our first product uh, that was a recycling bin made out of UBQ. So a recycling bin made out of waste. Um, beyond that, we've recently been able to uh, announced partnerships with Daimler, who's the manufacturer of Mercedes-Benz. Uh, this was extremely significant in the fact that it changes our society's view of waste can also be luxury. You know, we can utilize waste and make high-end products. Uh, we've partnered with Arcos Dorados, the largest franchisee of McDonald's um, in the world. So they basically run all of the McDonald's branches in the, in Latin America and the Caribbeans, and we'll be launching a, a food tray made with UBQ. Um, again, a very significant um, uh, development for us because again, we're, we're breaking down these stereotypes. UBQ can be made in something that is uh, near food contact. Waste doesn't have to be a yuck factor. Um, and, and another partnership that we have recently is uh, Mineti. It's uh, the, largest, uh, the largest manufacturer of garment hangers in the world. 
So when we think about the fashion industry and the retail industry and how it pollutes, we often look at clothing and textiles. And this is a really important partnership because it helps us all kind of look to the side and see what we call hidden plastics in the supply chain. So there are plastics, of course there are water bottles, of course there are you know, fast fashion clothing, but there's also all of the hangers, the shipping crates, things that we tend not to look at that have a gigantic impact in the carbon fo footprint of a company. Well, I love that you're, you're doing so many things that bring uh, the recycling process full circle. I wanna, I wanna bring this open to our audience now, and we do have a few questions coming in. Um, and, and this one's a two-part question. Great. Are there certain garbage items that you cannot use to create the UBQ material? And are, are we able to identify as consumers when we're buying products made with the UBQ material? Great question. Um, so first off, the only things that we filter out of our, um, of our feedstock is metals and minerals, so glass. And both of those elements have very high recycling value, and therefore nothing in the end of our process goes to waste. So we use everything. We either use 91% of the waste, which is everything excluding uh, metals and minerals, and those elements are then, um, are then recycled. What you asked about as a consumer, are you going to be able to identify? So this is a process that we're working really hard on. Uh, very soon you'll be able to see a, a UBQ symbol across all of the across all of the products. Um, so stay tuned on our website and you'll be able to find out more information about that as well. We'll definitely keep us updated once we can start looking for the UBQ uh, logo on, on products. So one last question from our audience uh, before we wrap up here is, where do you see UBQ going in, in the next five years? Uh, scaling up, continuing to scale up. Uh, we've just announced actually our, um, let me back up a bit. So up until today, we've been working out of a single small scale factory in Salim in the south of Israel. Um, and we've now announced a, a full scale facility that we'll be building by uh, Q2 2021 in the Netherlands uh, that will have a, a full scale, full industrial scale capacity. That means 70,000 tons of material opposed to the 7,000 tons of material we've been producing up until now. This gives us a lot more uh, kind of runway to be able to take on larger projects with large clients. Um, and it's important for me to say that yes, our technology is extremely revolutionary. Uh, we have the solution to effectively empty landfills, close the loop on waste to product manufacturing and significantly offset greenhouse gases. But our impact is completely dependent on quick and widespread implementation across industries. So this is really a call to action to anyone in the automotive industry, retail industry, consumer goods, furniture across the board to really look around and see how you're able to substitute some of the plastic that you're using throughout your supply chain into your products, uh, substitute it with UBQ and essentially offset the carbon footprint that you have on your materials. Well, thank you, Liat, for, for this fascinating introduction to UBQ and to UBQ for helping our environment.